on this first day of a brand new year. Let's bring in Mike Kazi. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. Did you see what I saw yesterday on TV? Probably not. All right. Uh, I was watching uh, the, bowl, the bowl games, uh, and I saw the game between Mississippi State and Tulsa. Tulsa came. No, in. I didn't see it. I heard there was a fight, but I didn't see it. Uh, Tulsa came in at eight and two. Now, here's what I don't know: Mississippi State got a bowl game with a three and seven record. But anyways, with I digress. Okay. So what, to, because of all these teams dropping out, I mean, it's it's stupid. Yeah. But so go ahead. Tulsa had had the better record, and. Uh, and at the end of the game, Tulsa lost. Mike, there was a huge fight. The teams lined up to shake hands. Not only included in the fight were the players, but some of the assistant coaches on both sides. See, I'm, I'm kind of glad that happened because Tulsa plays a second-rate schedule. Mississippi State plays an SEC schedule. And all you hear are these people talking about these, these, these smaller schools, how they, they should expand the playoffs so these smaller schools should be in it. And I think this year they should have done it. They should have expanded it to eight. So they could put the story to rest because these smaller schools cannot beat the bigger schools. And I'm glad you brought this up because here's Mississippi State who's 3 and 7 or whatever they were. I don't know if they played 10 games, but if they're 3 and 7 or 3 and 7 playing an 8 and 2 team and they beat them. Just barely, but they did, yeah. But they beat them. And that's a 3 and 7 team. So what would a 7 and 3 SEC school do against Tulsa? Yeah, no. They, I, they'd probably wipe the floor with them. I, I I agree with that. What I'm what I was upset about is the assistant coaches lost control and also got involved in this melee and and extended it uh and, uh, and well that's a whole different thing yeah. but yeah that's wrong yeah, it's 100 percent wrong yeah, yeah and 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 there were it was just it was just a, a real scar. so here's what should happen the school should get the death penalty that um who was it tcu not tcu um smu got they should have no bowl games for the next five years and lose all their scholarships I, That'll put an end to it. Or else, the, yeah, and I think the assistant coaches should be fired that get involved. Sure, in, in, absolutely. absolutely. I agree fired. 100%. Because was, I know that if I lined up with my high school team and they started a fight and I started to swing, I'd lose my job. So why shouldn't these guys? Yeah. But, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm kind of glad it happened because it exposed these teams that want to be in these playoffs as fakes. So – like Cincinnati and, and South Carolina, Coastal Carolina and all these other schools that they bring up this year, they had great seasons. They're not top programs. That's the end of it. They're not top programs. The, the, the middle-of-the-road, big-time conference teams will beat these, big, these smaller schools. And the top ones will wipe the floor with them. Absolutely wiped the floor with them. Well, and that happened to UConn, and and UConn, uh, they they made it into the into the into the uh, uh, selection w- one year, uh, and they were they were defeated. I think I'm pretty sure it was Clemson or something like that, uh, 44 to like six, and it could have been worse. But at the end of the game, they they lined up, they shook hands, and, they, and then they moved on. I, but you're right. But then you know, I just it just looked it looked absolutely horrible. And I'm, I'm sure it did. I, I I didn't even see video of it. I was watching other stuff last yeah. night, and uh, it, it's it's wrong. Yeah. It's absolutely wrong. And uh, I mean, it it it, uh, it just points out perfectly what I've been saying all along. These, these teams don't belong. They don't belong. And. They should do it. You know, like, like I said, this is, this is the year they could have done it, where all of these squeaky wheels, you could have put them in the playoffs, and they could have got smacked, and that would put it to rest forever. West, in, a, in a real good game, a tight game, West Virginia defeated Army 24-21, which was a real good game to watch. It was a lot of fun. Uh, Ball State beat San Jose State in the Arizona Bowl. Who cares? That was 34-13. But here's something that upset me, too, and I might be wrong on this. Uh, the Florida quarterback, uh, 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 Trask, um, he he turned pro uh, right after the, right off the playoffs. Uh, I just think he should have waited a little bit because he had such a terrible, terrible playoff game. I mean, it was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. I felt I felt bad for him. But uh, how about the team, the play, the players that didn't show up to play uh, for their teams? that opted out because they wanted to protect themselves. That really... Oh, yeah, that was a game I watched. 
Yeah. That's why I was mad when I missed yesterday. Yeah. I, I swear, I, I, I went back to sleep Wednesday, and I reset the alarm clock because I had to bring the cat to the vet. And then when I went to sleep Wednesday night, I, forget to, I forgot to change the time on it. But, yeah, there was, a, there was um, the other game, too, that Texas, whoever Texas played and they destroyed, um, you could see Texas was focused and, and playing, and the team that they played were, like, lackadaisical all over the place. But that's been going on for years. Um, and it, it's even more enhanced now because when you have only two games that mean something, all these other bowl games are meaningless, and you don't know if they're going to show up or not. Um, and that's just preparation and everything. But when you have guys, and this one team had a particular guy sitting out. I can't remember who they played, but he was sitting out, and he was standing on the sidelines in full uniform. I wouldn't even let that guy in the stadium. I would have made sure he stayed in, in the hotel or wouldn't even put, put, took him on a trip. If you don't intend on playing, goodbye. I mean, and, and it, you, you, st- you stole money from your school. You let your entire team down because of your personal selfishness. Yeah, it was Florida. That's why Florida got thumped so bad. That the- no, this wasn't Florida. It was another team. Okay, but, but Florida was the team, the Gators. All the top five receivers on the team sat out. Uh, and one of the running backs. How'd you like to? How'd you like to not know that and bet the game? Yeah, yeah. pretty amazing. I mean, even if you just bet the over, I mean, with with, with Florida's top five out, they're not going to score as many points as they scored before. No, nope. if they would play. I mean, it, it, it's pathetic. It, yeah. it really is pathetic. And, and these punk kids, uh, what should happen to them if they do that? They should put a rule in. That if you decide not to play in your last bowl game or something, because of they should call it the integrity rule, because you lose integrity and you can't be drafted in, in the NFL for the first five rounds. Hit them where they, they where they want it in their pocket. Hit them where it hurts. Yeah. It, it's totally wrong. They they screw their school. They take the scholarship and then they don't produce. It's 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 awful. And, and there has to be there has to be a remedy for the situation. And I think it's Alabama versus Clemson for the national title. I hope so. Yeah. For the reason um, Notre Dame I hate. Um, if, you know, if Notre Dame fell into it in the abyss, I would be happy. But um, Alabama should destroy Notre Dame. It's, they're three touchdown favorites, and they, they should destroy them because Notre Dame shouldn't even be in the game. And you hear people saying, well, there's a big drop between the top three teams and then the rest of them. Well, Ohio State had a chance to prove that they belonged and so Notre Dame proved they did not belong. They should be out, and Texas A&M should be in. And Ohio State is another team I hope gets destroyed because they should have played Texas A&M when, when Michigan dropped out of their game. They had the opportunity to play Texas A&M, and this was before the Clemson-Notre Dame game where you can prove a true number four, which, which Ohio State was at the time, to play in the bowl series. They ducked Texas A&M. So I hope they get a spanking today, too. All right. Let's move on to uh, pro football. We'll do our picks now because, hey, guess what? There's no Saturday game. There's just Sunday games. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't, I don't even think there's a Monday night game. I'm not sure. Let no, there's not. No, nope, there's not. There's no Monday night game. There's no Sunday night game either. Yeah. So uh, so let's, let's go to the big board here, okay? Uh, and uh, and make. Our... I got four games picked. I don't know how many you want to pick, but I'll, if you I'll... want to stay with the three, we can stay with the three. I'm fine with it. No, I'll pick four. I'll pick four. They're probably going to be the same. Uh, they might be. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Uh, I'm going to take. Um... All right, let's go. I'm going to take Baltimore over Cincinnati. Well, I didn't pick that one. Go uh, ahead. Uh, I'm going to take Seattle over San Francisco. I didn't take that one either. Uh, I'm going to take. Let's see what we have here. Oh, I'm going to take. Gosh, uh, I'm going to take uh, Indianapolis over Jacksonville. Wow, I, we didn't pick either. I didn't pick any of those games. All right, and I got one more game, <laughs> and I'm going to take. Oh goodness gracious, um, Kansas City over the Chargers. Wow, that's funny. I didn't take any of them. I stood, That's a trap game, by the way. Yeah. Kansas City's probably not playing anybody. But I, st- I stood clear of uh, Washington, Philadelphia, and the Giants and Dallas because uh, in the NFC East, you really just don't know. So anyway. Oh, you know. Yeah. You know now. Yeah. You know now. Yeah. Um, taking Green Bay over Chicago because I think Green Bay still has to win to get their home field. And New Orleans over Carolina because they're in the dogfight with it. So I took two teams that have to win there. 
um, Tampa Bay over Atlanta because I know Tom Brady just wants to stick it to everybody, and I'm happy for him. And my third, my fourth game is Dallas over the Giants. Um, Dallas needs to win. The Giants' season's over, and Dallas will beat the Giants in the Meadowlands. So Green Bay, Dallas, New Orleans, and Tampa are my four picks. You do realize that if Giants win and Washington loses, the Giants win the division. And if the sun comes out today, I could walk around in shorts. <laughs> that's right. I know. But that's why I steered clear of all those games. Because <laughs> I love my Giants, but I, I, I'm just well, not going to get involved. Talk in about picking. dogs. Do you really think the Eagles are going to show up this this Sunday? Uh, it doesn't matter. Washington is so – is so. I feel sorry for the coach, but uh, – but they're just so I, – I just – right now, Dallas is playing the best in the division, so they'll, they'll, they're probably going to be the winners. But still, it's just – I wanted to steer clear of it because it's just such a mess. But And I predicted at the beginning of the year the Giants would get six or seven wins. So uh, that's – I, I hope they win so they get their six wins, but I don't know if that will happen. All right, anything else in sports? Um, well, the bowl games today, I like Georgia over Cincinnati. Um, like I said, Georgia SEC team, middle of the road, beat up this team that they thought should have been in a championship game, and Alabama and Clemson. And I'm, I might actually go to William Hill and put some money on that three-team parlay today. <laughs> All right. So, uh, anyway, well. Got two races for tomorrow, too. Well, let's, let's hear them. Um, they're, they're overnight stakes. They're no big deal, but they're, uh, they're newly turned three-year-olds. All the two-year-olds turned three today. Um, the fourth race is the Dania Beach, 75,000 going a mile. Um, three-year-old Colts, seven, short field, only seven horses. Two horses I like it down on the inside. Um, the one fighting force for Pletcher has been on the, on, the, on the turf two times, um, was on one that got taken off at Keeneland, um, ran second by three-quarters at Belmont, came back to run in early December at Gulfstream, going the mile distance and drew off to win by two lengths. So two for two on a turf. This horse shows an affinity for it. Cost almost a half million bucks. So this horse is a go. And the two is a homebred by Calumet by American Pharaoh. Pharaoh's putting some real nice turf horses out. Um, this horse is going to go to the front, keep on running. One by three at Gulfstream on December 19th. Prior to had a real good bullet work at Palmetto, so the work came back to the race. And uh, I think this race had some talent. So... A one two two one in the fourth at Gulfstream tomorrow, and then the ninth race is the Ginger Brew. It's the uh, the accompanying race for the fourth. This one's for the three year old fillies and mares, and, and two horses I'm looking at here. Uh, down on the rail in early October, Grand Motions horse Oyster Box ran a real nice debut at Belmont, sitting just off the pace to win. Going six furlongs has a decent work at Palm Meadows on the 29th, prepping for this. Uh, but my top pick is going to be the seven horse designer ready. Um, this horse won north of the border first time out, only start going a mile on the 16th. That's, on, that's only one turn up there. Uh, but the second horse, second place horse, Mrs. Frankel, came back to win. So this horse won the debut, got a nice time off, um, comes back, looks like it's ready to roll at uh, Gulfstream tomorrow. So 7 1 will be the play in the ninth race tomorrow at Gulfstream. All right, Jeff, good New Year's Eve. I watched videos and uh, movies, and that was it. I didn't even know it was New Year's Eve, except for the idiot shooting fireworks around the house. <laughs> yeah, I went to bed early, but uh, but anyway. Well, Happy New Year, and uh, we'll speak to you again on Monday. Yeah, have a Happy New Year. Talk to you on Monday. Take care, Mike. Bye-bye. Mike Cosby with a check on sports this morning here on Robin Hood Radio.